Hey nerds, Todd Simmons coming back at you with some more Toddomation. Uh, today I'm going to start a short series. It's going to be three videos in this series, uh, specifically on Meraki and ACLs, or Access Control List. I uh, appreciate uh, BJ making the request for these videos, so uh, these are for you and everybody else that's ever asked me for a video on Access Control List inside Meraki. So you can see my desktop. I've already got uh, logged into my, Ro my Meraki. Um, this first video is going to be focusing on firewall rules. Yeah, maybe not ACLs, maybe firewall rules are a little bit different, but they call they kind of fall into the same area. That's why I wanted to do a video starting with the firewall rules. Uh, so as you can see, I'm logged into my Meraki dashboard. Uh, let's just jump in and look at the firewall rules by going to security and uh, SD-WAN and then jumping into firewall. Now, M Meraki didn't do the greatest job ever in when they created the instructions as far as their API documentation uh, for automation using their tools uh, with ACLs uh, or firewall rules in this case. Uh, so if you already have firewall rules, great. Uh, you can just run the get to actually get the firewall rules and it'll kind of show you uh, how they're set up as far as the, the keys and the values that you need to have for them. Uh, but as you can see real quick, uh, there are no rules uh, inside this particular network that I have. Um, and there's two types of rules in a firewall. So when you go into the firewall, you just see the inbound rules and then you see the outbound rules. I, I'm not going to be talking about any of the cellular stuff uh, in this video. These are two totally different API calls. One is actually just called the uh, inbound. Then the, layer, the other one is called the layer three rules. So when you look up that API call, and I'm, I have the API calls for you, you don't really need to. Um, just remember that they are completely different and they're in different sections uh, of the actual documentation for Meraki. So the first thing that we need to do is, is put all of our rules in one location. So what I've done, uh, is I've created this Excel spreadsheet. If you're not familiar with uh, how to interact the uh, Excel with Python and then Meraki, I have other videos for that. So just uh, you know, maybe jump into one of those other videos first. Uh, if you're not familiar where I go through this Excel document, uh, very, very granular. As you can see in my document, a couple of things that I want to point out. One, the name of my Excel file is the actual network ID. This is important, especially if in your organization you have two, three, four, five, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, however many networks. Um, making these Excel sheets match that network ID is really going to help you in your automation uh, going forward. So that's the first thing. Uh, the other thing that I want you to see is down here at the bottom, I have four different tabs that I'm going to be using. There's actually five tabs. One is just the validation tab, uh, making sure that you can't put something wrong in one of these fields. Uh, what I'm going to be concentrating on in this video is the firewall layer three in ACL and the firewall layer three out ACL. Now, I've already provided the headers here for you. This is exactly how it needs to be inside Excel when you import this, because this is actually going to be the keys for the dictionary. So when the Meraki APIs take that dictionary and put it into JSON in order to do the actual API call, uh, these have to be exact. Do not change any of these here at the top or the code's going to fail. Uh, you will notice that for the firewall, the layer three firewall rules in and out, the the keys or the headers, which, the, you know, I, these are headers, yes, but I make them the primary key, the keys that are going to be inside the dictionary. Um, they're basically the same. Uh, not all of these uh, Meraki videos you're going to see are the same. So make, pay, pay to particular attention to those keys up there at the top. So let's start with the uh, firewall layer three in ACL. Now, these are a little different because of the way that the inside rules compared to the outside rules work. Uh, the first thing that I want to call attention to is inside the source or destination CIDR. Uh, you can't use a, a IPv4 in these at all. It's either got to be a VLAN, which you would have a subnet in IPv4 uh, assigned to that subnet. When you do that, the actual data inside must be VLAN in all uppercase with parentheses. And inside the parentheses is the VLAN ID 
that you've created for that particular VLAN, and then a dot and a star. And this is an absolute requirement. If you do not have that, your APIs, uh, your automation is going to fail. So just understand that you're going to have to do the source and destination, either any or by this VLAN. You could do it via, via IPv6, but I doubt that many of you right now are doing a bunch of IPv6. Uh, but if you are, you could certainly use uh, the source cider and destination cider here uh, as uh, IPv6 addresses. Uh, pretty simple stuff, right? The policy is either going to be a deny or an allow. Uh, the protocol, as you can see, we have options. This is where that validation comes in. Uh, so it can be any ICMP, ICMPv6, uh, TCP, or UDP. I've got mine all set right now for TCP. Uh, the source cider uh, is going to be any, or it's going to be some VLAN uh, that you're specifying. Uh, the source port, once again, um, can be any or any port that you're specifying. Uh, normally source ports, we don't, we just do any. Um, and then the destination cider, once again, it can be any or it's got to be this VLAN uh, parentheses, the number uh, assigned to that VLAN uh, in this dot asterisk or star, depending on how you want to say it. It's very, very important. Uh, without this, it, it just fails. Uh, destination port, all pretty simple. Uh, syslog enabled. Now, I have all mine set to false because I don't have a syslog uh, set up. Uh, for this particular network. Uh, but if you did want it syslog enabled, which just means that it's going to send that hit over to your syslog, uh, you would just put true here. And then the comments. You can change the order of these in any way that you want as long as these headers uh, stay the same. Once again, those headers must stay the same in order for this to work. Okay, so we go in here. I've got no rules whatsoever. Okay, I've created the rules. So the first thing that we're going to look at uh, is I'm going to pull up the Python code that I wrote, which I'm going to share with you. You can just go to my GitHub page uh, and pull this down. So first thing that we're going to look at, uh, let's look at the uh, appliance code that I wrote. Uh, a couple of things here. Uh, with this is I am using uh, the decouple. Uh, it's a Python dash decouple if you want to import that um, through pip. And what I do is it just creates my org ID and my API key. It allows me to keep them private while I'm doing these videos in any other time. Uh, notice I am specifying right now the network ID. Uh, we do not have to specify the network ID, but you do have to provide the network ID um, if you wanted to put that inside your decouple. But once again, if you've got a bunch of different networks, right, we would want to for loop this or do it a little bit differently. Uh, it's kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing today in this document or this video. Um, so here's the input information that I'm going to need along with my network ID. Notice my network ID matches the uh, name of the Excel document that I created for that network. Okay. Uh, then uh, simple commands, if you've seen the videos before, this is just, this is your link. This is how it's gonna contact the, the Meraki dashboard. Uh, creating this dashboard is just like creating a class, right? We're gonna be able to call it based on that information. Um, this first line here says, uh, gets the data from the Excel spreadsheet. So uh, in this one, I've broken it down into individual pieces of that Excel spreadsheet. Uh, at the end of these videos, you'll see where you can actually do all of these at once. Um, I'm going to use this ACL get rules, uh, which this ACL get rules is just coming in because I'm importing the Meraki appliance ACLs. We're going to look at that uh, Python file here in a minute as ACL. So ACL.getRules. Uh, and then I provide the network ID over to those get rules. It's going to return um, two lists of uh, dictionaries, the firewall in ACLs and the firewall out ACLs. Okay, so um, in order to get that data, it's going to get this Meraki appliance ACLs. So when we open this, the first thing and the only method that's in here, as you can see, is this uh, get rules. So from get rules, it's got the network ID. From that network ID, it's going to determine the Excel doc. This is why it's important, I think, to really have your network IDs tied to the name of the Excel document. So using the F method, I can take that title, which is going to be the network ID that I'm sending over, uh, and then adding that to the .xlsx extension, and it's going to open that file for me. As you can see, I have that file right here. Here's the file. Um, 
and it's actually going to create two lists, the firewall in and the firewall out rules. Okay, I have this firewall level three in ACL and firewall out. And the only thing that's going to do that here, here is it's going to go get all of that uh, and create keys for each one of the rows or keys for the document. Then each one of the rows is going to have a key value pair. So it's going to return a list of dictionaries. Okay. Uh, and I'm calling a firewall in and firewall out. Uh, notice that the update appliance calls them firewall in ACLs and firewall out ACLs. Okay. At that point, I've actually got the data. So I just want to show you real fast. Uh, so I'm going to do an IC on this and I'm going to do firewall in ACLs just to show you what it actually looks like. I am going to stop the code right there. I'm going to bring this up. And let's run it. And here we go. So as you can see, it went and got all the information. And these are the NACLs. And as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. If I go look at my Excel spreadsheet on the N, there is one, two, three, four, five, and six of them. So once again, like I said, it's going to return a list of dictionaries. So the dictionaries are going to be nested in there. And each of my values are going to be here. If we want to see the same thing in the out, we just change this to firewall out ACLs. Once again, let's bring this up. Let's just clear this out so it's easier to see. And then I'm going to run those. And there it is. There's one, two, three, four of them uh, that we're using uh, in the outbound ACLs. So there's my data. I have it. We can prove that we have it uh, just by doing a quick IC. If you're not familiar with IC, IC short for ice cream. Um, I've moved on from print and pretty print. I just really love the way that the ice cream method formats everything for me. Uh, so I've been using that. Okay, so we have two API calls that happen next. And the first one is this update network appliance firewall inbound firewall rules. Okay. This is going to be what goes on the top, these inbound rules. The outbound rules are being applied by this second API call, which is update network appliance firewall L3 firewall rules. So they're both in the same section. Just notice one's called inbound firewall rules, but the outbound, instead of calling it outbound, for some reason they called it uh, appliance firewall L3 firewall rules. Okay. What am I sending? Well, I'm sending the network ID. And once again, I've specified that. I've statically put that here. You don't have to do it that way, but for the videos, I did. Uh, and then the rules equal. This is a requirement here for uh, the appliance. You have to have the rules equal. You cannot just have um, this firewalls or this variable in there. You must have the rules equal uh, in order for this one to work. If you don't, you're going to get an error to where it says uh, it needs uh, three pieces of input and you only provided two, and that's why. So that's pretty much it, right? So this is going to take these rules that I've created in this Excel sheet on both of these tabs, and it's going to update my network. So as long as you have formatted these correctly, and I've provided the formatting in here, this should work for you. Quick word of note, if you don't have a VLAN 10 or a VLAN 1000 or the VLAN that you're specifying inside the uh, in uh, firewall in rules, it's gonna fail. You're gonna get an error saying it, it didn't have that VLAN. So, you know, really look at the output of what you're getting uh, from your code if you ever have a question about uh, why something didn't work, okay? so. I'm going to go ahead and run the code. And that's it. Uh, as you can see, it took maybe a second or two. So if I come back into my firewall rules, notice there's nothing here. That's because I hadn't refreshed it. So I'm going to refresh it. And there you go. There's all my layer three inbound rules and then my outbound rules. So. That's pretty much it for this video. Um, 
I'm going to have two more after this, just in case you're interested in how to do this on switches and how you're, if you're interested on, on how to do this on uh, wireless SSIDs. Uh, so please like, subscribe. If you have some comments, I'd love to hear. If you have a request, I'd love to hear it. Um, so for now, we'll talk to y'all later, nerds. Bye.